In the last video, we talked about the fleas that affect dogs and cats, their taxonomy, morphological features, life cycle, and pathological importance. Go watch that if you haven't seen it yet. This video is about flea control. So, how do you get rid of the fleas? A key thing to keep in mind is their life cycle. If we interrupt any part of this, we can stop the cycle, resulting in fewer and fewer fleas until they're all gone. Of course, we have to continue treatment long enough to make sure they're all gone. If a few are left and we stop, those few can propagate and start the cycle all over again. Insect growth regulators interrupt this part of the life cycle so that no new fleas are made. From the name itself, they inhibit the growth of immature insects. There are two types, juvenile hormone mimics and chitin synthesis inhibitors. Juvenile hormone mimics act like the natural insect juvenile hormone, which prevents the larvae from completing their metamorphosis, and the larvae eventually die. When absorbed by gravid female fleas, they also affect the developing eggs. Examples of juvenile hormone mimics are methoprene, phenoxicarb, and pyriproxifen. As for chitin synthesis inhibitors, chitin is a component of the exoskeleton of insects. With its synthesis inhibited, the growing larvae cannot molt and may even die within the egg. Examples of this include lufeneron, which can be given orally or as an injectable. Insect growth regulators, however, don't kill adult fleas. Thus, treatment is often combined with adulticides, which are the next few medications that I will get to. They kill off fleas at this stage of the life cycle. Neonicotinoids are a class of insecticide modeled after the compound nicotine. Thus, they are agonists of nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, inhibiting cholinergic transmission leading to paralysis and death. Examples of these include nitenpyrum, given orally, imidacloprid, which is a spot-on, and dinotefuran, which is also a spot-on. This one is weird because it's derived from the acetylcholine molecule instead of nicotine, but it's still under the neonicotinoids category. Spinosin. This class of insecticide are like neonicotinoids in that they also target nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, but do it on a different binding site. They also affect GABA receptors. They are derived from the fermentation of Saccharopolyspora spinosa. Spinosad contain both spinosins A and D. It has been formulated in chewable tablets for both dogs and cats, and can also be combined with milbamycin oxime for monthly heartworm prevention and internal parasite control. Fipronil. Fipronil binds to GABA receptors leading to the inhibition of chloride ion influx in the nerve cells of insects. This makes them hyperexcitable, then they die. It also works against acarids, ticks and mites. In a topical formulation, it's very lipophilic, in that it accumulates in sebaceous glands, allowing it to last as long as a month. And finally, isoxazolins. Isoxazolins are a new class of compounds that is also both insecticidal and acaricidal. They block arthropod ligand-gated chloride channels and kills the bug within 48 hours. They are formulated as chewables, and protection lasts for a month to as long as 3 months, for some of them. Examples include afoxalaner, fluoralaner, and saralaner. There aren't any products that I know of that target the pupil stage. That stage is pretty sturdy. As mentioned in the fleas part 1 video, that stage is also resistant to desiccation and fleas can remain in that stage for months. I once again state the importance of staying on medication until the fleas are completely gone, even the stages that don't live on your pet. Which brings us to the topic of environmental control. The house may be treated with pyrethroid sprays. Pyrethroids are more stable synthetic versions of pyrethrum from the chrysanthemum plant. They paralyze insects by interfering with their sodium ion channels on the nerve axons. Examples of pyrethroids are as follows. There are a lot, but I just remember that most of them end in thrin. A thorough vacuum cleaning can also help, paying close attention to the places your pet frequents and cracks and crevices that don't get much sunlight. This is probably the only method here that can get rid of the pupil stage, because you physically get rid of them. The pet's bedding, blankets, and carrier should also be cleaned and washed thoroughly. These methods of environmental control can be repeated every 7 to 10 days. 
to make sure to catch any fleas that are just emerging from their cocoons. And with that, I hope you and your pet can be free of those pesky fleas.